Hi, I'm Alan Sommerfeld with the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. MJ employees are on the hunt for the emerald ash borer. It's a small, green metallic colored bug that is not native to the United States, but it's made its way to the country and is spreading, killing hundreds of thousands of ash trees. It's been found close to Minnesota, just across the border in Wisconsin, about a mile. MDA employees are down in southeastern Minnesota looking for the bug. Right now they are girdling ash trees, which means they're cutting away part of the bark. MDA's Mark Abrahamson explains the process and why we're doing it. Girdling the tree, we're going to take the bark off and the phloem, so right down to the outer wood, which is the sapwood. So the phloem is where, that's how the food moves from the leaves down to the roots. So the roots get fed through the phloem, carbohydrates moving down to them. So when we cut out the phloem, what we're doing is we're starving the roots, and so that's going to put the tree under stress. And also what happens if you cut a little bit deeper is you end up cutting into the sapwood, which in ash trees, they're moving water, wild well, trees are moving water through their sapwood from the roots up to the leaves. In ash trees, it's just like the outer ring of sapwood, so it's really just kind of a thin area that, uh, that moves water. So when you girdle it, if, particularly if you girdle it deep like I'm going to do with this, um, you're also cutting off that flow of water and the tree is going to decline more quickly. Now the reason I'm doing that is that these are all trees that we're going to sample this year, so I really want them to decline a little bit faster rather than slower. And if you just cut out the phloem and don't cut the sapwood out um, or cut into the sapwood, then what can happen, the tree might actually kind of grow over that wound and, and, and uh, get to live on for a number of years yet. So. Um, here. So I just make a couple of cuts around here. Oops, that's okay. So I'm actually going to take a band off. Like I was saying, um, the trees can grow over the wounds, you got to take kind of a wide section off so that they don't, don't just grow over it. And this time of year this is pretty easy because the trees are real juicy because of all the uh, sap moving in them, so this just pops right off. Whereas later in the year, they dry out more and it's really hard to, to get that off. Right now it just pops right off. So, this is the sapwood. So this is right in, right in there, that's where the water is going to be moving. You can see I cut into that a bit, so I probably cut all those cells. Uh, more importantly, cut the the phloem, which is just a relatively thin, thin layer in there uh, beneath the bark. Okay, so this would be the phloem, this kind of lighter stuff, pulpy material. And like I said, that will cut off that flow of carbohydrates down to the roots and the roots will starve and that will in turn put stress on the rest of the tree. When, when the tree goes under, is under stress, it, um, something changes about the chemicals that are coming off it. So either they're different or there are more produced of something, but whatever it is, it makes it more attractive to uh, emerald ash borer. And it's probably kind of a general thing with insects that attack trees, you know, they like the ones that are under stress. So um, it's, not, it's not super attractive, it's not like we're going to pull an emerald ash borer now for miles away, but it adds a little bit more, op or more probability of finding it in this tree. So you increase your odds. We don't really know how much. It's not a, not a real exact science, but um, you know, the research they've done on it has found that you, you do increase your odds by having the trees stressed as opposed to just, you know, picking random trees to sample. Workers will go back to those girdle trees in the fall, cut them down, and look for emerald ash borer. If you want more information on EAB and how you can stop the spread of the bug, go to our website at www.mda.state.mn.us. Thanks for watching.